You're watching Seatome TV. Knowledge is power. So, uh, hello everybody. My name is Michelle Morand. This is Alexander Rowland. Uh, we are co-founders of Cancer Treatment Options and Management. That's an independent worldwide research and advocacy organization that helps cancer patients and their oncologists access the most current and beneficial treatment for them now. And what we're here for today is something that you wanted to make sure everybody knew about mm -hmm. right away. So we're doing a very special short broadcast for you specific to ER positive breast cancer, specifically those that have relapsed on endocrine therapy. Apparently there's some new developments yes. and you could not wait to tell us all no. about these. So tell us all about them. Well, typically what happens when women um, progress after being on endocrine therapy for years with estrogen positive breast cancer, mm -hmm. uh, typically, you know, they're, they're given the option of chemotherapy, which is not the most effective approach. Mm -hmm. um, recently, uh, there have been some FDA approved targeted therapies that require sequencing, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, we know that uh, you can target the PI3K mutations with the newly FDA approved drug Apelisib, and it's incredibly effective. We also know that if you have a BRCA1 mutation, then you can use FDA approved drugs such as Elaparib, a uh, class of drugs called PARP inhibitors. Um, and then also with emerging mutations, in other words, mutations that crop up um, that aren't in the original sample but crop up over time, um, there's two emerging mutations that have uh, FDA approval. Um, there's, a, there's targeting estrogen receptor one mutations, and there's a whole class of drugs in the process of being approved. Um, there's fast track approval for uh, one of the SIRDs, selective estrogen receptor um, degraders, and that's called lazafoxifene. And so that's gonna probably be approved fairly quickly for regular use. And then also if you have mutations in the HER2 gene, which can happen uh, quite commonly in women, they can cause resistance, and as the FDA approved drug called neratinib. So there are some targeted therapy options for women with both um, original mutations and emerging mutations. But what do you do if you've relapsed um, on endocrine therapy and you don't have any of these mutations? Um, you know, what, what do you do then? Well, there's a really good study that just came out um, called the Factian trial. And in this trial, they looked at uh, endocrine resistant estrogen positive uh, advanced metastatic breast cancer patients who didn't have these specific mutations. Um, actually, the, the way the trial went was they were looking for certain mutations, hmm. but they didn't, uh, what they found was quite interesting. Hmm. So um, they used a drug called um, Capavacitib. Um, it's a pan-AKT one to three inhibitors. So there's three different isoforms of AKT. And um, they looked at this drug that, that addressed all of these isotopes. Um, they also know that this drug works on uh, PI3K mutations and AKT, um, as well as deletions in P10. So these are commonly, um, uh, these, are, these are mutations in a pathway that lead to a common um, signaling cascade. Um, you can have PI3K or AKT mutations that are overactive, and then you combine that with it or, or in lieu of a P10 deletion, and it's pretty well, uh, you know, you get that signaling cascade mm -hmm. of excessive uh, proliferation and so on. Mm -hmm. So in this particular drug, um, or in this particular trial, they use this drug, um, Capavacitib, um, because they thought it would have a great effect. Now, interestingly enough, they did use this drug previously with a drug called paclitaxel on the same group of women, the same, you know, estrogen positive, advanced um, uh, treatment resistant women in a trial called the BEACH trial. And interestingly enough, um, single agent capaversative had no activity. Um, uh, no benefit? You no mean? benefit, even when combined with this paclitaxel. Oh. Uh, and this was in women that had mutations in the PI3K pathway. Oh. So uh, in the Factian trial, they said, well, let's combine it with a drug called fulvestron, which is an estrogen receptor inhibitor. 
Um, and that seemed to be the magic solution. Um, so that was when, Fulvestrin, did he add it to this one? Yeah, so when they tried it with chemotherapy, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, when they combined it with Fulvestrin, um, which okay. has stopped working in these women, huh. um, they got an amazing response rate. So they got an overall response rate of 41% versus 12% for Fulvestrin alone. Um, the progression-free survival was over doubled in this group of patients compared to Fulvestrin. Hmm. It was uh, 10.2 months versus 4.8 months. Hmm. And the overall survival, although it's not complete as of this date, it's just a initial uh, speculation of overall survival, was at least 26 months versus 20 months. Um, so we'll we'll probably see that increase significantly. Right. Meaning the trial isn't closed yet. They no. don't, they, they, right. Mm -hmm. Wow. So uh, the clinical benefit rate uh, was 56% versus 35% for full vest drug alone. Hello. Hello. So obviously, you know, having that perfect synergistic combination is really everything because this drug um, was kind of on the way out. Um, they thought it was going to work really well and, and because it failed in the BEACH trial, it was kind of on its way out. Mm. Um, so so this new information of combining it with fulvestron mm -hmm. in women uh, that have stopped responding and that are resistant, that don't have any of these mutations is really important. Now, the interesting thing about this study is they were looking at it because this drug was designed to target women with PI3K, uh, AKT, or P10 mutations. Mm. That was um, the initial plan. That was the initial plan. But what they found is that it didn't matter if they had these mutations or not. This drug actually worked in the patients without those mutations. As long as it was combined with the fulvestrin. Exactly. Okay. And in fact, the hazard ratio, which is the uh, reduction in, in death, um, was 0 0.59. So the way you look at a hazard ratio is you take one, uh, the number one, and you minus the hazard ratio, and that shows you the, the, the reduction. So um, 51, or 0 0.59, uh, percent hazard or 0 0.59 hazard ratio is equivalent to a 41% uh, reduction in risk of death. Mm. So they found this uh, 0 0.59 hazard ratio in the people with PI3K, P10, and AKT mutations, but it was 0 0.56 in the non-mutated. Mm. So, so it's actually, different. no, it's actually a little better when they didn't have mm -hmm. these mutations. Mm. So, you know, something very unexpected. We thought this drug was going to be a knockout for AKT mutations. Seems to work better in patients that don't have them mm -hmm. when combined with full vestron. Right. So now we have a solution for women that don't have targeted options. Right. A targeted option that doesn't require a mutation. Mm. That's excellent. I think so too. Yeah. So ladies, that's the faction trial. Yeah. And that's a combination of capavacitib and fulvestrin. Yes. Uh, you were talking um, uh, earlier, I heard, about uh, an online database for clinical trials, mm -hmm. clinicaltrials.gov. Yes. So um, if you wanted to do a little research, you could go there and mm -hmm. have a look for this faction trial, gather a little bit of data, take that to your oncologist. Mm -hmm. um, when something is going to be fast-tracked, it means it's uh, like the FDA has already decided it's a good idea, yeah. and now it's just a matter of making sure everybody knows about it, mm -hmm. um, and therefore, you know, all the appropriate information is there for insurance companies mm -hmm. and, and for funding for patients. Um, but if this is appropriate for you, time is of the essence. And so that sounds like yeah. a good way to go. Definitely. Something to look at. Great into. finding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I can see why you wanted us to know about this. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much, Alex. You're welcome. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you for watching Seatome TV. Subscribe below and stay informed.